what do you do? I had a discussion with one of my students, former students today. We're trying to help people develop this. We're trying to develop this program that helps people um, identify and then accomplish important life tasks. And it's forced me to think about I've, something I've thought about over years. What are the important life tasks? Like, okay, so you should get educated to the to the approximate level of your intelligence. You should be employed gainfully, have a job, or maybe if you're lucky, a career. Um, you need an intimate relationship. You should have some friends. You need a family. You need to regulate the world of temptation, drug and alcohol use, that sort of thing. You have to take care of your health. Um, you need to make some use, productive use of your time outside of work. So there's eight things. Maybe there's more, but that's sort of eight. And maybe you don't need to be fully accomplished along all of those eight, but they're pretty important and they're not a bad start. And if you can come up with a better list, more power to you. But well, let's take one. You, you're going to have a family, an intimate relationship and a family. Well, the classical way of doing that is that someone's male and someone's female and they get together and they have children and then they have grandchildren. And that's like a third of your life or a quarter of your life, or a fifth of your life. I don't care. It's some non-trivial portion of your life. And that identity, male and female, is a precondition to that route through life. And then you have children, and they mean something to you, and they give you something to do, and you have grandchildren, and it's the same thing. So by playing out male and female, it's sort of like you've now occupied 25% of your time productively. That's the role. Okay, let's say we blow that apart. Well, then what? What are we supposed to do then? Because you can't pretend that into existence. And that's that's the postmodern element of this. This is the refusal of the real world. It's like, okay, we'll make identity entirely mutable. But what are what the, the, the trans kids that came after me in 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 the first demonstration against me? I, I said, you think I'm your enemy, but I'm not. And the reason I said that, being a clinician, was because I thought, well, you're adopting an identity that that there is no rules for. What the hell are you going to do with that? You're, you're, you're inviting so much trouble into your life, you can't even possibly imagine it because you won't know what to do. And people won't know how to treat you. And so where does that leave you? Now, you might say, well, I'm so distraught about my, the discordance between my psychological state and my biological reality that that pales in comparison, and maybe there are situations where that's the case, but man, an identity that doesn't solve the problem of how you're going to live isn't an identity. I don't know what it is, but it's not an identity. Yep. I, and I don't I even know how you. people would change the rules exactly to, to make that work. So I, I agree with you wholeheartedly <laughs> that. Um, Effectively, our identities are means to an end, and there is there are conservation laws that apply to the system as a whole. And unfortunately, yes. and this is actually uh, essentially the uh, the core argument of the book that Heather and I uh, have just completed. But 